Halo Outreach Podcast to keep you up to date with everything going on in Halo. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 53 of the Halo Outreach Podcast, a podcast that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. As always, joined by the Pat Man Gaming over here, lovely co host. Pat, why don't you say hello? What is going on, everybody? Good to be back. Good to be back for sure. It's been a, it's been a hot minute since the last podcast, man. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> holiday hiatus. We keep calling it. That is that is what me and Kevin. We're gonna use the holidays in this, as an excuse for my laziness and our. We've just been busy in in life. Mm-hmm. Life is just struck, you know. So it's not all about uh sunshine, rainbows, and and all that. Like you said, this is our second. Like just so everybody, knows, this is our second time recording this podcast because we've had a crap ton of technical difficulties. But uh, Kevin noted the first time, take one, we got families, man. We got we yeah. got people to take care of, right? It ain't all about, you know, I haven't been in the Pat Cave in a very long time. So it feels good to be back in the saddle, so to speak, and uh, bringing you guys some Halo news. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it feels good to get back into it. Like, I always feel like, it's like I feel like almost every week it's like a mountain, like a hell guy, like, uh, just can't get over it. But once we actually got in, get in to start doing it, I'm like, Okay, I'm glad we did that. That was actually really yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and so uh, today on the episode, guys, we got talking about the Halo Infinite high level update that we have coming for us here pretty soon. I know exact time frame, but at least a couple weeks. Expect that. So we're gonna be kind of speculating what we will see with that. Uh, since the last podcast, we had Halo Four's release on the PC, and awesome updates that came with MCC on that. So we'll definitely covering that for sure. Pat got an Xbox Series X. We'll be talking about the MCC updates with that and his experience with that new console. Is it going to be worth you paying that money? Well, have to find out. Stay tuned to find out. Yeah, stay tuned to the whole video to understand all the, the all the details. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so how, Pat, how was your Thanksgiving dinner, dinner though, man? It was good, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I figured we'd start this podcast off saying what we're thankful for. So I will uh, go ahead and say I'm thankful for my health because that is uh, not to be taken for granted during these times. And um, hopefully everybody else is the same. Everybody else is good. It's uh, definitely hit some people in the family, but uh, in my in my household, we've avoided COVID because I stay home regardless. Uh, quarantine has really been my element. I haven't <laughs> changed really much about my life, except for when I do go out the rare occasion, I'm wearing a mask. That is literally the only change that I felt. So it, I'm I'm good. I'm ready for the apocalypse. Bring it. I'm staying <laughs> in the pat cave. I'm I'm hunkered down. Um, another thing I'm thankful for is my lovely co-host here, a great friend, uh, somebody who I'm glad I've met and developed a relationship with over this last almost two years. Yeah. Uh, we're we're well over a year now, and uh, very grateful for the work you put into your content, our content together, and just being a good friend. So I appreciate you. Uh, I don't have many real life friends. I'm a very picky person when it comes to friends. So I know. Be be lucky that you <laughs> you've stayed around this long uh, on my uh, on my list, Kevin. Yeah, mm-hmm. could always just just ghost and you just never see me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just uh, just grateful to to be making content. Big year on YouTube and stuff. Um, really hoping to hit four thousand by the end of the year. That's the that's the goal. But mm-hmm. I'm gonna need a big final month. I'm like three four hundred subs short. So. Hey, we need man. a big final month. Hopefully that that infinite news man might 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 do it for me. All it takes is one video, so we'll yeah. see. Um, but what about you? What are you thankful for this year? Well, I'm definitely thankful for my family. They've really kind of helped get me through this whole year, really, just because of just I haven't really been able to like converse with anybody, you know. So yeah. like the, my my social interaction is my family, pretty much. Um, yeah, thankful for my wife now. She's my wife. Yes, turned, new, turned, new became lead. my wife this year, which is yeah. quite nice. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like such a, such an understatement. Like eh, it's nice. <laughs> it's quite nice to have somebody have your back for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm also very thankful for uh, the community we've been able to build on the channel here on uh, oh, yeah. Twitch on YouTube with you as well, and you know it's. This year has been kind of crazy when it comes to content creation for me. Like, uh, yeah, definitely like my biggest year I've ever had. 
even November was the biggest month I've ever had on YouTube, and we're not even done with November yet. True, kind of crazy. And uh, and then this is during like the 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 dead period, right? <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, it's uh, just you know building ourselves up towards uh, you know getting ready for Halo Infinite, really, you know, setting ourselves up right on that one. I'm just thankful for everyone just checking out the content, supporting it, and just you know tuning in, you know when you can, checking out a video, supporting, typing that like, or you know if you're on Twitch, you know watching, subscribing, or chatting, or any other way, just interacting with the content in any form or another. I just really appreciate it. So, uh, Absolutely, yeah, really thankful for uh, everyone coming by, and then uh, thankful I've been able to be employed this whole year too. I know a lot of people out yeah, there. Yeah, that's a nice thing. <laughs> I know a lot of people out there have, uh, you know, it's been pretty tough for them to, uh, you know, get, well, we, we hit like what, like 12, 15% unemployment or something like that at the peak? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Ridiculous, man. Like, yeah. it's such a difficult year for a lot of people in so many ways that, uh, yeah. Sh shout out to <clears throat> parents out there too, because, yeah. um, I've, I was one of the unlucky ones to lose my job because of COVID. Um, because I had nobody to stay with my kids because they didn't have school. Mm. And that's kind of what I can, that's my free babysitting. I can't afford babysitting. It's extremely expensive. So, um, shout out to the parents out there who stay home with the kids and have to do schooling stuff. I, I don't envy a teacher's job. They, um, I, I, it's, it's rough, man. It's hard dealing with kids and, and, and trying to be a teacher, being a parent, being patient and all that. So 2020 has definitely been a tough year. Uh, for me but like i said it's uh just glad to have what i do have because it could always be worse I re somebody's always got it worse than somebody else out there so Very grateful true. for what i do have um and just can't wait for this damn year and this whole pandemic to be over honestly <laughs> me too man like it's like it's just been like 2020 i feel like it's just been on hold since march <laughs> it's nothing, yeah just like what are you doing i don't know, staying inside Watching Netflix, playing games. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, uh, but yeah, I know you're talking about when it comes to teach. Like, you, you find new appreciation for teachers. Like, my wife, who is a teacher, like, for, like, you know, kids are, like, five to seven years old. Like, I couldn't do what she does. Nope. I couldn't put up with kids that much. <laughs> nope. It is not easy. Not easy, for sure. But yeah, so it's always, always good to remember, guys, that, like, you know, appreciate what you have. And uh, also for like, you know, thank give thanks to people who are around you in your life. You know, to say to say, hey, I appreciate you. It goes a long way. Mm, definitely. But yeah, so uh, should we get into the Halo news deal? After getting yeah, into the, yeah, I think we might we, we might touch on all the feels. Right? Yeah, let's hit into this that. isn't the uh, <laughs> the thank Thanksgiving outreach podcast. This is the Halo <laughs> outreach podcast. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, if you guys do not know. It was uh, pretty much on Reddit. It was just a reply on Reddit, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Because uh, yep. uh, it was Sketch who was kind of you know simmering down some expectations people were kind of just building because of the VGAs are coming around. Sometimes you have some pretty cool announcements. We haven't heard anything about Halo Infinite. This is like the last main event happening within gaming. And so it would be a good time for Halo Infinite to make some kind of announcement or some trailer or something like that. Sketch went on the Reddit, replied saying they don't have anything planned for the VGAs. And so, so that rumor was false. Yeah, and uh, but it is important to know that the, he said that it's important to know that they are currently working on a high level update, high level, and to kind of plus I'm sure just kind of let us know exactly what's been going on because really they've been very reactive when it comes to Halo Infinite stuff and rather mm -hmm. quiet ever since the announcement of the delay. Yeah, and. What do you feel is going to happen with this high level update? What do you think is going to ha be in this? I'm hoping for a new gameplay. Uh, they, they did acknowledge that how hard it is to put gameplay together mm -hmm. for something like the VGAs. But if they're doing their own event, like another 343 holiday stream or something, they could easily just stream some gameplay from, from, uh, from the studio there or wherever they're doing the recording at. So I'm hoping for a new gameplay. I don't necessarily expect it um I, I would love a multiplayer trailer of some sorts even if we just even if it's not multiplayer gameplay i i, I want to see multiplayer gameplay but um like think halo 5 uh take that into consideration when we got the 
Halo 5 multiplayer announcement trailer with like the Spartans in a breakout map, just ground pounding and taking cover and mm-hmm. thrusting everywhere and crap. I mean, even if we got that, just to get a sense of something about the game, um, I do expect, hopefully, to have a lot more questions answered. Of course, we're not going to get everything answered. They're going to play their cards right. They've been doing it so far. That's not going to change. Very close but to the chest. <laughs> I, yes, very close to the chest. But no doubt that we're going to get more information on Halo Infinite, which is always a great thing. That is, mm-hmm. uh, that's what we're waiting on, you know. Um, you know, Unishek kind of mentioned it too with the uh, the community update, how a lot of people are disappointed that we're learning a lot of stuff about the game or seeing a lot of stuff about the game from promotions and not from the, you know, the game itself, which is the way it should be. But, you know, with the delay, um, a lot of things were set in place with promotions, they said, as far as with their partners and stuff. And you can't really go back on that stuff. It's even if the game gets delayed, you kind of the marketing team is separate, obviously, mm-hmm. than the development team. So they kind of move ahead with the promotions and stuff that they had planned, um, which is unfortunate because we're, we're we don't want to. I don't want to keep seeing all these promotions. And be like, I don't know anything about this game. I don't care about Chips Ahoy and what freaking <laughs> coatings they're offering, or you know, Butterfinger or Monster and stuff. I want to see more of the, the game that I cannot wait to play, and and that's been definitely a tough balance to strike, but. You, I, I like that 343 came out and acknowledged that, That you know, I mean, we all assumed that's what was happening, why we were seeing all this stuff from these promotions, but it's good for them to acknowledge it. And they even acknowledged something that I think was really important too, because um, I think me and you can both agree on this. 343 has been great as of late with transparency when it comes to MCC. Um, go back to the very first episode of the halo outreach podcast where we had john friend and jeff easterling on and they were great with transparency there as all right here's what we're trying to we took the feedback from week one of outpost discovery here's what we're going to fix about it you should see these changes next week and i went there and i experienced those changes because i went to two different i went to the first one i went to i think the third one and Mm -hmm. i saw the changes that happened and what 343 said they were going to do they did and i loved that amount of transparency um they acknowledged that recently they said you know we like the sketch literally used the word transparency when it comes to infinite and i think it has been lacking with infinite we've kind of been le- left in the dark and the fact that they acknowledge that i think is really good to uh you know kind of you know look at yourself and say all right well what can we do better for this community and um you know do better what, with what we've been doing with mcc and stuff that they can do it we know they can do it and I, I can't wait to see. Hopefully, we get a steady drip of information now mm-hmm. with Infinite's development. Hopefully, even like a something like the sprint, like we got with Halo Five, would be awesome to see a peek inside development. Everybody loves those kind of things for the hardcore fans. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. You didn't mention about restarting this engine when it comes to like the promotion yeah, the and people, the hype train for Halo Infinite after the holidays, which makes me think like, what January, February, we might actually start seeing some actual content about halo infinite start coming out you know but now we don't have to read terms of services when it terms legal documents when it comes to you know more information about the game and stuff like that which would be really nice would make my job and your job a lot easier when it comes to doing uh, youtube stuff and um so when it comes to, like this high level update i don't know if we're gonna necessarily get anything into specifics i think it's gonna kind of fall along the same lines that we saw for like the Log update that we saw for the um, July reveal and the um, Discover Hope reveal and the announcement reveal. Something along those lines, where I think it's going to be much more like a blog update, kind of just generally telling you what's going on. I don't think we're going to even see like gameplay. Maybe some mm-hmm. screen. I think you might get like a screenshot or two to kind of get your, you know, whet your, whet your appetite, if you will, in the way. Maybe like a screenshot of like a multiplayer map or something like that. Right. I can see that, but um, I think it's going to be just like a straight up like blog post reply and just kind of addressing a few things. Like you definitely need to address the coding system. They might have to play their hand a little bit more than they would like for the coding system right now because that was such a huge issue within the announcement yeah. because they basically said, you're getting this, we're taking away this, but trust us, it's better. But 343 <laughs> is always been kind of struggling with player trust pretty much ever since MCC. <laughs> you know yeah and uh it's just oof. like it's that whole so they're gonna have to address that i would like to see them address 
in an official capacity Chris Lee's departure as well because they on 343's website you wouldn't even know that he's gone <laughs> you know yeah. Phil Spencer did acknowledge it which mm -hmm. is nice and um, I, what do you say about it actually I don't think I'm Right, exactly. If I did, it's been so long. I think it was Phil Spencer. It's either Phil Spencer or like Matt Booty or somebody like that. But just basically, yeah, this stuff happens. And yeah, I think it was Phil that this stuff happens in game development all the time and that mm. people shouldn't read too much into it. That um, this he was basically done with what he needed to do. And also saw something about Joe Staten being really um, impressed with what he saw mm. with Halo Infinite, yes. which, you know, th that's all, you know, who's to say, you know, oh, of course they're not going to say, well, Joe Stane came in and he thinks the game looks like absolute crap. <laughs> you know, that's that's not going to happen. But um, stuff like that is definitely interesting to read. But yeah, Phil came out and just said, like, listen, you know, the Chris Lee departure, I know a lot of people were having, um, you know, a lot of a lot of, you know, doubts about that and where the game is. He's like, but I wouldn't I wouldn't buy too much into that. So, yeah, and he was replaced by two really great you know, people with yeah. Joseph Stane and Pierre Hintz, who was a part the head of the, the head of the publishing team for the MCC. So. If he knows how to fix a game from the grave, your hints would do a pretty good job with that. But he's more on the yeah. multiplayer side of things where those are saying it's on the campaign side of things. Right. But again, you have two great people just for those two positions, which is kind of crazy to think that you need two people to recover for Chris Lee. Yeah. Kind of tells you how much definitely. he was doing for the team. Yeah, definitely. You know? But uh, yeah, I think it's mainly going to be a blog post, kind of just overarching kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't, like I say, I wouldn't expect gameplay, maybe a screenshot or two or something interesting. Um, I think they just need to kind of show why some of the new things that they've talked about. Like, I also like to see like the challenge system, how that exactly kind of plays out within the game. Because yep. having that come back in Halo Infinite is freaking awesome. I feel it's been kind of swept on a rug when it comes to news. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm really hoping, man. That's like, this guy. I think also think I think it's also gonna be a bit of a, like a one stop shop for all like the loose stories that have been kind of going around since the announcement of the delay. Yeah, hopefully. So I think, and that's kind of the main point. I think this whole thing. Um, Don't think the, we get a release yet either. No, still, no, I wouldn't expect that either. Um, I think was it? Um, I don't know if you watched Sean W. He did a video of, a, of his super secret source. Saying that uh, they're planning to show Halo Infinite at uh, E3 2021. And I think maybe and if that's I mean, the if that's the case, then we're probably going to see like a fall release. Yeah. But if we're going to get, if, a, but if we're going to get, the game's a, not coming out. The, and yeah, of course it's going to be at E3. That's that goes without saying mm -hmm. for sure. Because Phil, Phil Spencer has mentioned about how um, 2021's lineup might actually be something more concerned for selling consoles rather than 2020's lineup because right. they're they can't keep those xboxes on the shelves you know they're flying right. off as soon as possible same yeah. thing with playstation and stuff like that because this, this generation is such a huge jump compared to the last one if right. you were just like you were just overwhelmed by the power of these new consoles that's like mm -hmm. a, it's like a no-brainer if you're a console player really yeah and uh you know you could see a, a fall release which would suck but then also we get proper time for marketing, proper time for news drip for us as well. Proper time for uh, for some sort of flight. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because if, if you're and gonna feedback. do a if you're doing a spring release, I would probably expect to like see like a Call of Duty like like you know promotional uh, beta rather than an actual beta, like a stress test you know thing. Yeah. Where like if you actually do a fall release, it probably gives you enough time to do a, a proper flight to get community feedback in. Even though I kind of already trust the people that are working at 343, at least in the gameplay side of things, uh, especially mm -hmm. like the pro team that they have there, I definitely would trust those guys to make like a solid multiplayer for Halo if their feedback is taken properly. You know, yeah. which, which I have a feel, feeling this time around it will be compared to what it was in Halo 5. But mm -hmm. uh, and when, when do you expect to see this? Like, what's the absolute latest you would expect to see this uh, high level update come out? The absolute latest you said? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, absolute latest would have to be December 31st. I think that they would have to, <laughs> to, yeah. to do something before the end of the year. I mean, they said a couple of weeks, but then they also said after the holidays, which I don't know if they meant, if they meant like Christmas and stuff, then yeah, we're looking at end of the year, but then that's, that's more than a couple of weeks away. So um, maybe they meant Thanksgiving for that. So maybe between now and Christmas, 
we'll mm-hmm. see something. I think uh, we're getting a big community update on the 14th or, or 17th or something, right? 17th. For Munichek, but that, yeah. that was confirmed that that's not, that's going to be separate from the high level update for Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. But Unishek did say something really interesting that I pointed out in one of my videos that he said, of course, you'll expect more Halo Infinite news in the high level update than in the community update. So maybe we get a little bit of tidbit of information in that community update. And then after that, we'll get uh, you know, a lot more information on the high level update. I feel like he kind of prefaced it, making it sound like the high level update is coming out before community update. Cause I think the community update is supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like a year, uh, like, you know, a, right. a culmination of everything that happened in the year, which I think is kind of a really nice way to kind of end. Like when it comes to three, four, three's communication stream with the community is to mm-hmm. end on that rather than on a high level update. This guy's, I feel like it just kind of puts a button on the end of the year. At least for communication and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the high the community update is not really going to be infinite focus. So oh yeah, it's I, not. There are two separate things. I don't know. The way I read it, it, it sounded like it was after, but it could be. I mean, we'll see. But I could probably see it coming out that same week though, because uh, that that's on, that's December seventeenth is on a Thursday, the Thursday, uh, which is like the week before the week of Christmas, where I'm sure mm. you're not going to be hearing anything. No, those two, for those two anything. weeks so yeah. i'd have a feeling probably within the week of like the 14th between the 14th to the 18th is when i'm expecting to probably see yeah definitely high level update come out so make sure you subscribe to the channels my channel pat's channel i mean hell even other people within the community as well they can use your support but you should watch sure. our our stuff first though and then yeah sure yeah just we watch gotta plug the, ourselves first yeah watch watch, watch other people's stuff really just you know is common courtesy yeah, exactly. You want the actual Just music. let it play. You don't have to watch it. Just let it play. Yeah. You know, at least it'll help, help the analytics out. Yeah, people. get the watch time up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, I think really until then, we're just kind of waiting, man, to get some yeah. Halo Infinite stuff. I'm trying to get creative with the content. The last week has been pretty slow. And I think yeah, it has. I have a feeling a lot of stuff is going to be pretty slow until those updates come out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so like I got a music video that's coming out on Monday my holiday special every year and uh i gotta start getting more creative when it comes to content right now because i can't just yeah, rely on yeah, strictly definitely. just news stuff yeah you yeah. have anything else you're kind of looking to kind of in- integrate with your channel when it comes to like the slow news time nope just uh, <laughs> sticking to the news i i'm good with one to two uploads a week for now yeah uh, i'm not really pressing it i i am not the creative type i, I can be creative but it just takes way too much time out of my day to, to do something like that with the kids and stuff. I just yeah. wouldn't be able to focus on a lot. So I got to pick and choose my battles, you know, uh, mm. unfortunately, but uh, I am looking forward to, you know, the infinite stuff uh, that, that should definitely, definitely help you. We should hopefully be able to make at least a couple of videos out of this uh, infinite update. Cause oh, that's yeah. what people are really uh, looking forward to, you know, even, you know, my recent Halo Infinite news video did really well, which I wasn't expecting because uh, I was a couple of days late on it, and it still did really well for my channel. So people obviously still are waiting <laughs> to hear about this game. There's been a lot of uh, controversy with the game lately, a lot of negative news, which is unfortunate. But hopefully, this uh, kind of steers the ship straight for uh, for Halo Infinite, and we and we get something uh, we could really sink our teeth into. Hopefully, man. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we can move on to the next topic of Halo 4 PC launch, you think? Yes, yes. Yes, let's move over to that. Uh, Pat, have you had, have you been playing it much? Like, we haven't really chatted or played a whole lot since uh, the last podcast. Not since the update. No, yeah. uh, I, I have played a little bit uh, of it. I played it for a solid couple of days. Uh, enjoyed the uh, little bit of Halo 4 squad battle mm-hmm. uh, because of the, of course, putting those camos behind those challenges, which... I'm a fan of. I'm a fan mm. of them doing that. I know a lot of people aren't, but I think people should be rewarded for stuff in game. I've been a proponent of that for a while. I've said that several times how I like earning stuff in game and kind of showboating and showing it off, much like the katana wasn't easy to get. You had to get all the achievements. Uh stuff like this is really cool. And yeah. speaking of that, I was actually able to snag thanks to uh I had Jimbo, Puma, and Josh in a party with me. We grinded out uh, recon slayer for the last couple of days before it went out and i got to 20 barely ah. and got that arctic skin and it actually looks really good dude it like, does honestly it looks really good <laughs> and much better than the halo ce version 
Mm -hmm. and it just sucks because i don't play that much halo 3 on mcc so uh, i'm kind of happy that i got it though but the halo 4 squad battle man i I haven't played it since launch but it was even sweatier than recon and i thought recon was extremely sweaty Mm -hmm. and we were getting curb stomped on (laughs) squad battle so that that was definitely interesting well because like right now the people that are left playing the mcc are like the dedicated fans of halo that just like never left so like getting like level 20 is in like quad battles now is more like yeah. getting like a 50 really for the, and, the type of people you're playing against yeah and you got to get the 25 for the final camo and 15 i think for the first one yeah, yeah. Mm. and and i said the same thing about recon i'm like man a 20 in this place this is almost like getting a 50 with how sweaty it is yeah this yeah. is even worse dude <laughs> um I do enjoy it a lot more than I enjoyed Recon Slayer because just having a BR and the hit detection and how good it feels in in Halo Four compared to the hit detection and the the randomness of the Magnum. And, the detection and is crisp in Halo Four. Nice, yes, it is very crisp. So, um, you know that's been nice, but uh, it's been a struggle, man. But besides that, I mean, playing Halo Four on PC, played a little bit of the campaign. I haven't tried Spartan Ops or anything yet. But it feels good, man. And uh, the interpolation fixes that they implemented feel really good. So good. Um, yeah. Uh, playing on unlimited frames is a lot better. And of course, uh, the biggest thing about this update, I think, for a lot of people is crossplay. Crossplay, input based matchmaking, server region selection, all that stuff came with this update. And that is huge stuff for MCC. And it's it's been working flawlessly. I've been playing with friends on Xbox and vice versa, playing from my Series X with people on PC and playing on PC with friends on Xbox. It's we've not had a single problem. So um really glad that that has been implemented. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. Me included. This is probably the biggest feature from, for me that's been implemented into MCC. So I'm, I'm glad to see it there. I honestly think that this was the biggest update we've ever had to the MCC was the Halo yeah. 4 update. You get a whole, you get a whole new game, you get cross play, get input based matchmaking, uh, server region selection as well yep. and just uh, a bunch of other just minor fixes and whole new season as well to grind out for more new content season, new forge stuff for for um for the forgers out there a lot a lot of big forge updates for halo 4 oh yeah so and yeah. And, and also that video did pretty well for me on my channel <laughs> as well <laughs> well i'm sending like seventy five thousand views on it like insane jesus i know on what what video the the video i was like the biggest mcc update ever video oh, I made. Okay. and then well, watch i even had like people on my face like facebook friends be like hey i saw your video like what oh god You're like yes oh no no i got nervous like oh no we're reaching it's real life internet life we're starting to converge this isn't good oh god <laughs> that'll be the day when my mom texts me like you popped up for me like, oh no <laughs> it was like some guy from like high school i've never talked to since high school and he's like hey i saw your video on youtube like i've been playing halo here and now i'm like crazy <laughs> dude that's a that's a good feeling because like somebody texts me too they're like dude i was looking up halo infinite monster promotion and your video popped up on google i'm like yeah that means i'm doing something right baby let's go <laughs> seo <laughs> hell yeah yeah you get those residual uh view videos exactly fill up a nice bank of those and trying but a lot of times they just kind of die off real <laughs> yeah but, yeah. but uh, uh with with that uh halo 4 update that we got we also got on the same day that Xbox Series X and S update. Right on, in. Yes, on, on MCC now. Let's talk a little bit about that, Kevin, because I did a couple of videos on this. Um, the major difference being the load times with the solid state drive built into the Series X and S versus the Xbox One. I did a comparison between Xbox One X and Xbox Series X. And graphics-wise, not much difference. I couldn't tell anything, absolutely anything, um, which I expected because Xbox One X, I believe, was already on like the enhanced uh, textures and stuff like that. We were supposed to get slightly better draw distances, but I couldn't really notice. I, I'm not digital foundry. I'm not freaking. I'm not really good at recognizing, you know, like zooming in. Like, all right, well, you can see that there's ten more pixels right here on this tree, six hundred yards away on this version. And they did a, they did an excellent job with artifacting and anti-aliasing. No, but from sheer, you know, just looking back and forth, I couldn't really tell that much of a difference. The huge difference being, like I said, load times. And the FOV slider is exclusive to the Series X and S versions for now. 
it should be coming to Xbox One as long as no problems uh, keep persisting. That's why they took it down off the flight and made it exclusive for now to Xbox Series X and S. And the other huge difference is 120 FPS in MCC now. Which is, if you've never played 120 FPS, like it's a it's huge a difference. Huge difference. Like if you think going from 30 to 60 is huge, and you think, oh, yeah. game 120 though, that's that's excessive. You know, I don't that's need overkill. That no. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, honestly. But then I remember when I, yeah. you know, was playing Battlefield 4 and I upgraded to 120 frames. I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is really, really, this is where butter. you really want to be. <laughs> Literally butter. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Uh, I've been playing. Uh, the new Call of Duty is absolutely abysmal. On the launch Xbox One, on Xbox One X, it's oh, even yeah. unbearable. It's Modern not even, I don't even think it's 60, dude. No, it's I, not. I don't think it's 60 frames. Modern Warfare even on the One X. wasn't even like 60. Yeah. It was terrible. Which I couldn't play it. It was crazy. It was blurry yeah. and just like the draw distance was like five feet. I have to have me on that. It's just like low oh. res and just like framey and just like, yeah, I, I couldn't handle it. I, yeah. I just uninstalled it. I'm like, I just, I just can't. I can't do this. I can play yeah. it on PC just fine. Yeah, it's exactly. on PC, which but... I've been playing Call of Duty a little bit on the P my graphics card came with a PC version, so I'm glad I didn't have to pay for the game twice. Nice, but I got on the Series X, it's obviously performs a lot better. The 120 frames is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing though with MCC is, and this is kind of disappointing, and I hope it, it, it could be a problem with the old engine. Um, but you know, a game like Call of Duty, you can have 120 frames and have an FOV slider on that game on the Series X. But for some reason on MCC on Series X, you cannot have FOV slider. If you put 120 frames on, FOV slider disappears. Really? You got to play it. Yeah, you have to hmm. play a default FOV, which is really disappointing. So to choose, it's really a hard choice. I choose 120 frames over the FOV. I'll deal with yeah. the abysmal FOV, but it would be nice to have both. So hopefully 343 can work that into the future. Um, maybe, like I said, because of the old engine, it's just not possible, but... I don't know. I don't claim to know anything about game design, but I, the way it, my brain works, I'm just thinking like, okay, game like Call of Duty comes out in 2020, way more demanding, can pull it off. Why can't old Halo games? But like I said, could be a problem with the old engine and and trying to fix that with um, with everything. Another thing I noticed with my graphics comparison is that the Xbox One X, for some reason, has a higher default FOV than the Xbox Series X. Oh, really? Which is weird. Yeah, that, that was weird. I thought that was a, a weird thing, so... Um, oh, so you're saying like but, the default know, FOV for Xbox Series X is actually wider is, than the default on like the is Xbox lower. One? It's more zoomed in than it is on the Xbox One X. The One, one X is more zoomed out, which is weird. Um, so maybe they they tampered with the default values. Like if you just click the button to, to reset all everything to default, obviously on the One X, I can't see the the um, FOV, uh, you know, you values. Got, you don't have the number. The slider's yeah. not there. Right. So whatever the default is on the One X must be, a better FOV than on the uh, hmm. on the Series X, so that, I thought that was interesting as well. But yeah, the biggest thing is is the load times. Man, there was a twenty to thirty second difference sometimes. Like loading in Halo Two Anniversary playlists, Forge. Um, obviously, it doesn't really matter. Multiplayer, you can't start the match until everybody's in there anyway. So the higher, you know, the better load times don't really factor in. But twenty to thirty seconds, especially on you know, if you're playing like assassin's creed or the witch or something that's going to make a huge difference you're probably seeing maybe upwards of like gta 5 upwards of a minute difference between a uh, you know load times so that that was really impressive that that's obviously we've been experiencing that on pc for a while but it's nice to have you know the the console space come through with that it's it's pretty dope was there an ssd on the series x yep Series X and S both feature SSD. The uh, S is a 500 gigabyte SSD, while the Series X is a one terabyte SSD. Mm. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. Yeah, SSD is like a total, pardon the pun, but game changer. It's a it game changer, it. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. But uh, so right now, would you like suggest the, like, hey, your console um, player, get this Xbox Series X now, or just wait until infinite? It depends on what you're playing, honestly. If you're just playing MCC, like Halo 5 didn't receive any upgrades. So if right. you guys are wondering that, we're talking strictly Halo space, no, I don't think it's worth it right now. Um, unless you have, I mean, and, the, and it also factors, a lot of things to factor in. Do you have a 120 hertz monitor or TV that can take advantage that has HDMI 2.1? Because that's what you need to display, um, you know, this. Like I, I even tried, I had a monitor that I was testing out that was 1440p, 100 or 240 hertz 
and it played 120 frames fine on the Series X because it had a 2.1 HDMI. When I went back to my old monitor, that it's 165 hertz because it's HDMI 1.4 or whatever it was, or 2.0, I could not play in a, in a 120 frames. So hmm. you have to look up, you know, the technology that you have. If you have, you know, a 120 hertz TV, you know, it's worth it for the 120 frames. But if you're just playing MCC, no, it's not that graphically, you're not going to be blown away. Games like I've tested, like Gears 5, like I mentioned earlier, Call of Duty, huge difference, oh, yeah. huge mm-hmm. jump, like a huge generational leap you're playing on like low settings on the base xbox one on call of duty when you switch to series x you're playing on high to some settings are probably ultra at, at some point but not everything ultra obviously yeah like um, they have like yeah. specific like high res texture packs for ultra exactly edition, like ultra exactly settings because like i have yeah. pc i just download like the high-end one i didn't doubt bother with like the 4k textures which right. like add like an extra what like 150 gigabytes or something like that to the download yeah, it's huge yeah, well, or on console, you have to download the whole thing, which I think on console for Cold War, is it pushing like 200? It's like it's 175? Like, one, like that? It's one, one something. That's because of the yeah. HD textures? I think it's actually only 130. I think the regular game is 90, and the, yeah. the HD version is like 130, so it adds 40 gigs. Still substantial. Mm-hmm. And so... And, um, yeah. The ray tracing is on the Xbox Series X as well, and um, I did like a little side-by-side screenshot and zombies of ray tracing off versus ray tracing on and that's a huge difference so if mcc could get ray tracing uh, enabled i don't know how much big of a difference it would make on old games like you know like the mcc has but i think it would definitely make a difference on you know like reflections and stuff love to see three for three implement that in the series x that would be cool to I think, test I think they mentioned with. that that they want to look into they did, they did they name drop it. it yeah yeah, um, yeah they like- definitely acknowledged it but no guarantees yeah, do you think? Do you think uh, maybe I mean, sometime Halo Infinite's in... going to have it. Yeah, of course. especially that now that's going to be delayed. I think because right, they mentioned definitely. that they were. It sounded like they were looking to patch in ray tracing for Halo Infinite around like yeah. February. Yeah, they Something were like there. It was a post post launch patch, so they already acknowledged it will have ray tracing. But hopefully, we get it at launch now. Yeah, I feel like a game like Infinite, you need to have ray tracing at launch because that's supposed to be like a, oh, a yeah. console seller. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those dedicated features to your new system that you need to show off. So, and okay, first okay. party needs to show it off every little feature. I think that's really- another really cool feature too by the Series X, the quick resume feature, mm. where you could, like, say, I, I mean, not every game supports it right now. They they turned it off for some games, but MCC does support it. I can confirm that. Um, so, if say I'm playing a different game that supports quick resume, and I'm like, you know what? Go switch over to MCC real quick and grind out some challenges in campaign. It will pick up right where I left off in that campaign mission. Like if it'll, it'll just unpause and you're playing tip of the spear midway through the mission, right where you left it. And then you can switch back to the other game and, and be halfway through that. And it's, it, it's a really cool feature. You could do up to like four or five, six games at a time wow, really? doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's definitely a game changer, especially once they get every single game working right now, it only supports like, they said thousands of titles, but not every single game. So that was crazy. Very interesting. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. yeah. yeah it's a cool feature. Uh, I'm still holding off for a new graphics card is what I'm leaning into. I can't, I'm not like Pat who can go like, I'm going to get a new graphics card and a new comp. Yeah, you know, not everybody can be a Pat. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm holding on to the PC side of things. I'm looking for either a 3080 or the new uh, AMD graphics card, which I've heard is actually better than the NVIDIA card. But I need to look more into it. I just want to have heard. That's a debate for a different day. I could say a lot of things on that, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So Xbox Series X, maybe if you're only playing Halo, maybe hold off. But if you play a variety of games, or if you're able to utilize some of the new games that came out this fall, like the new Assassin's Creed, stuff like that. If you're I was looking like, at Cyberpunk, that would be Cyberpunk a huge too. reason to get a Series Ooh, X. Cyberpunk yeah. with ray tracing, though. And you got the Mass Effect Legendary Edition coming out spring. That's true. Which yeah. I'm definitely will be playing that. So Same. I'll be sadly a boy, a sad, a sad boy without ray tracing, but hopefully soon. <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to that game a lot. Yeah, I wish it was. I wish it was a full remaster, though, not just uh, you know, oh, we're upgrading the the resolution of the game. Like I wanted a full like new textures. I know that would be a Aren't huge they? undertaking. No, I I thought I read that it was just literally like a up, upscale resolution fit, you know, not like redoing. It's not a remaster or not a remake or anything. It's just a remaster where they just up up the res of it. 
I'll have to look into that because I was actually going to I was it. actually going to make a video because I think it'd be super cool if they were going to like you know update the textures and things like that if they made a much more cohesive experience between all the games you know yeah. basically like have all the textures be the same throughout the games so yeah, they would be, be more like you're playing like one entire continuous story rather than playing three separate games yeah so I've heard like the main issue has been Mass Effect One's been kind of holding it back when it comes to updating it properly. Yeah. Yeah, Man, I played it. I played it on PC where you can get like you know above sixty frames and you can update the textures and stuff like that, but it can be a little buggy at times, especially on the PC version for Mass Effect Two and Three as well. It can be a little but little buggy, but still very yeah. playable. Yeah, but definitely. Xbox Series X, uh, if you want to give it a go. Hopefully Santa treats. Hopefully Santa treats you right. You know, were you a good boy? <laughs> you know, we we were wearing, wearing a mask. You and nice. We were wearing a, wearing a mask, keeping six feet. You've been a good boy. And it mm -hmm. comes by with the Xbox Series X. You never know. <laughs> so are we going to the playlist updates here? Want to yeah, go into yeah. that a little bit? Yeah, let's go into these playlist updates. So uh, with MCC, they actually, uh, another thing that's coming is a big December patch. Hopefully fixing oh, yeah. a lot of bugs. Mm -hmm. um, they also did the push to talk update for controller users. So now you can just push, uh, what is it, like down on the D-pad? Something like that. Uh, yeah, down on the D-pad to talk if you're on controller, and that's on by default. If you want to change that, you can go to the settings and do that. So that is definitely cool. Um, we plan on having Tyler Postums Davis on the show soon on Halo Outreach Podcast to answer some of your guys' MCC, uh, MCC questions and some of me and Kevin's MCC questions as well. Um, so that will be really Really fun to have him on. I cannot wait for that. Uh, I'm sure we got a bunch of stuff. I, I've been getting in a lot of questions uh, from my community, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, as far as playlist update for MCC, this is kind of interesting stuff, so let's go over it. So um, with between right now and November 30th, which is actually today the time of recording this, they added in some new holiday-themed uh, Thanksgiving stuff. So there's a turkey time playlist in mcc which rotated in for halo 3 social ffa uh reach ce anniversary rotated out they removed epicenter from halo 4 4v4 social and shatter slayer dominion from halo 4 squad battle they adjusted the rank restrictions for halo 4 squad battle to help search times at higher Already. ranks which <laughs> yeah which i don't have that problem so you know uh, another thing to note halo 2 anniversary hardcore has taken the spotlight, so they've been doing a rotational thing uh, in the ranked uh, playlist, yes. So Halo Reach Hardcore and Ranked Recon Slayer have been removed. So yes, you can no longer get that sexy uh, Arctic-looking camo for the sniper. It may come back in a future challenge, but for right now, it is gone. I do like and right now, I do, I do like Hardcore yeah. H2A. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. I mean, I like H2A in general. I love H2A. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love H2A, so... Uh, right now, which me and Kim, Kevin are probably going to plan on doing a little grinding after the podcast, all challenges, weekly challenges are awarding double XP right now in MCC. What? So we got to get, we're, we're on that blue badge pursuit mm -hmm. right now. So uh, another thing to break down the, there's some really cool game modes in here. I hope they keep continue to do this with MCC. So there's Turkey Fiesta where the more kills you get in a row, the slower you go, because everybody gets the itis when they overstuff themselves on turkey day, and you're just you're slower to move. That's exactly um, what happened to me. I ate too much, same. and I passed out for like two hours after eating. Dude, and then I, I passed could, out immediately. And then I, then I woke up like after a two-hour nap, and then I couldn't go back to sleep until like 4 o'clock in the morning. Same. <laughs> same. I actually passed out at my mom's house, and I have an hour and a half drive home. So I woke up and just drove home ate some apple pie. My wife made some homemade from scratch apple pie that was magnifique. She did excellent. So shout out to her cooking skills. <laughs> ate some of that apple pie. Yeah, I was stuffed. So uh, another one is turkey carver. So all swords all the time. Wishbone brawl, where oddball variation, where you get points for oddball beatdowns. So that's kind of fun. Black Friday, I thought this was the best one. It is melees only because it's all out pandemonium on Black Friday. Everybody's beating each other up for TV <laughs> deals and stuff. So that like people are getting, I mean, that's not funny. People get it trampled on Black Friday. I know that's not funny, but it is freaking pandemonium. And then one called 
tri tri tryptophan 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 uh, tryptophan i yeah. don't know what that is it's the ke- it's a chemical within turkey meat that basically will make you tired there's a chemical in turkey meat that makes well, you it's like it's like part of like the turkey like protein compound like it's like what's in the it's a it's like what's in turkey meat. It's called tryptophan. It's the only so time of year you're ever you tired. It's whenever you have someone who's just trying to flex, like they think like they have a lot of knowledge on something. They're like, oh, it's because of tryptophan is why you're tired. Like, <laughs> shut up! It's because you ate three so, pounds of food so before. The Kevin's, cause, so it's the Kevin's of the world. That are, <laughs> are like that. I've literally never heard of this, and I know a bunch of random facts. So thank you. I learned something today. The more you that know. is an infection. The more you know. <laughs> that is an infection variant. So that is the MCC update that we got. Now we have also Halo 5, of course. So right now it is the 30th of November. So global double XP is live for Thanksgiving weekend for Halo 5. So every playlist is featuring double XP. On December 3rd, the winter 2021 arena season will begin. So the first season for 2021 for Halo 5. Core play is also rotating in for Triple Team as a featured playlist to get double XP in in Halo 5. Once that global XP ends, if you guys want to continue to get increased XP values, then core play will be the way to go starting on December 3rd. But that brings us to the end of the playlist update and the end of this podcast. So, Kevin. If people are looking to find, for one, your holiday special video or your streams or want to interact with you on social media, get to know a little bit more about the Kevin Kulex. Where can they find you at? Type Kevin Kulex on the internet. And And you will find the man. Kevin Kulex on YouTube. Kevin Kulex Halo on Twitter. Kevin Kulex on Instagram. Uh, I did actually look into making a TikTok, but then decided not to because it's still partially Good owned man. by China. <laughs> and don't, want, don't want any part of that. Yeah. Um, Twitch, Kevin Coolex as well. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate if anyone, if anyone wants to go and check out that holiday video. I put a lot of effort into it. And it's probably the, one of the better videos I think I've ever made, honestly. There you go. Quite excited about that. And our, buddy, and our buddy Rap Scallions on drums. There you go. That one. But it's all so, good there. What about you, Pat? Where can people find your content on it? If you guys so choose, my content is at the Patman Gaming. You can find me anywhere on social media with that handle, on YouTube with that handle, on Twitch with that handle. Um, just type in the Patman Gaming, you'll find me, and look forward to hopefully pushing for four thousand by the end of the year. That would be really nice. If not, so be it. We'll make it up. I'm sure there'll be some big months to come. For the channel so i'm really excited about that and uh just good to get another podcast episode done yeah man it's been too long yeah definitely so thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys for sticking around and being patient with us appreciate every single one of you that watched this video on youtube or listen on spotify appreciate you guys which if you didn't know we are on spotify as well and on podbean if you want to save that phone battery but If you want a little more interaction, you get to see our lovely or not so lovely faces, depending on who you ask. I trimmed up my beard Uh, today, so I made sure I was So did I. I trimmed up. Yeah. Trimmed up a little bit. So, uh, (laughs) you know, to look presentable for the people. Exactly. And uh, if you guys want that interaction, watch us on YouTube or come by live next time. Follow us on social media. We'll notify you guys when we're going live with the podcast episode. Look forward to postums being on, hopefully on the next episode, if all of our schedules can align. And um, if not, I'm sure we'll get them on at some point. So Mm. thank you guys so much again for the support. Go check out Kevin's holiday special. Leave a like, subscribe to our channels, and we'll catch you guys on the next podcast episode.